definitely begin to watch us because now they want to see how are you living. You say you're saved, but are you really saved? Because when you become saved, there's things you just can't live your life doing anymore. You have to go away from it. Um, I remember me growing up, I used to always say, I'm not ready to be saved yet. Some things I need to take care of my life first. But when I became saved, I realized every day is going to be a test. I, I'm not going to change overnight. It's going to be a process. It's going to be a, a walk in life I'm going to have to do. So when you become saved, you know, just go down that, that trial that you're going to go on and just make your life better day by day, studying the word of God, understanding God for yourself. You can hear say people talk about God and what he's done in your life, what, in their life, but you have to learn it for yourself. You have to read the word for yourself and trust and believe in what God has done for you in your life. Oh, 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 what the Lord have done. But and one thing I always say, the Lord didn't do nothing wrong. It's us and human right. You have the right and the choice to get it right on your everyday walking, living life when the Lord bless you to see another day. So, and you have to start off with that faith like the last time that my wife has preached, you know, but you know, not only faith, you got to have salvation. So we know we have to, one of the first steps in salvation is we have to seek to understand God's plan. What is his plan for you? Not the plan for anybody else, but what is your, the plan he has for you and your life? Um, if we can turn to Romans 3. And we're going to go to verse 23. It says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we have to understand that sin is any act that displeases of God. God don't like sin. Um, and we can't, you hear some people justify sin. Sin is sin. It don't no matter how big or small it is. It's a sin. And God doesn't like it. And, and, you know, and like, you know, the Lord says in Romans 6 and 23, for the wages of sin is death, and the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ of the Lord. So, you know, like I said, if you were raised up in the Christian home or you wasn't raised in the Christian home, you know wrong is wrong. And the wrong, you know, you know is he's going to leave you in some type of, you know, heartache and pain but nothing you know glorious of the lord because if if it's in the lord glorious you know you get praise and upmost and, and blessing but the wages of sin is death so you know you have you know choices to make in your daily life you know you can choose the right way with the lord or the wrong way with you know death and uh you know like i always say you know the powers in the tongue you know you can speak speak it or you can you know do it so if you're going to do it, I always say do it right and walk with the Lord versus doing wrong and fall short of sin, which is death. Because we, we have a spiritual death that was entered into the world. Um, it talks about when, you know, Adam sinned um, in Genesis 2 and 13, when it talks about 
um, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest, therefore thou shalt surely die. So we have to die to sin daily. It has to be a, a daily thing. Um, we're not saying we, we as Christians don't make mistakes, but we have to be able to repent and don't turn back to that same sin. Move forward. Because like my wife said, you know, we as Christians being watching on our, uh, on our everyday living and walk with the Lord. So you never know who's surrounded by you, not on your, your, your Christian your family, but there's other people who on the outside watching you. And, you know, they look at you going to church or they look at you praising the man who you say is your Lord Almighty. But when you do wrong, first thing they're going to do is judge you. And then when they judge you, then they, that have the doubts and the and the non-believers too, saying why I should believe in the Lord and follow their path when they you know doing wrong on a daily life. So, so I always say if you, if you believe in the Lord, you do right, you do right, and then when you do right, you preach it and you pass the word on. So hopefully the non-believers can take in the good word that you spread to them and pass it on down the line to get more believers. And like the pastor always say, he you know he's the pastor. You know, of course by, you know the daily living of gotta go to this and to learn the Bible, get all the degrees and stuff like that. But we all are preachers. You know, when we all be taught in the house of the Lord, it's for us to go out to seek the non believers so they can believe in what we believe in, which is the Jesus Christ of the Lord who's who saved for us, who died for us. Yeah, and like he always tells us, we have to go read the word for ourselves because man can tell us something but if you don't go back and get that understanding for yourself and read that word for yourself, you'll never know. You can't go back and say, oh, Pastor so-and-so said this, so I know it's true. Because we know that there's false prophets, preachers, and so on. And, you know, the Bible is the truth. So if you don't believe the pastor or believe me or believe anybody who, you know, out there trying to deliver the word to you, pick up the Bible. It will give you all the truth that you need to believe. And then, you know, then if you don't believe the Bible, then I don't know what to tell you. Because the word and the truth is in the Bible. The word, the word, that's what we have to know. We have to understand the word, read the word. Um, so, like I said, we have to seek the understanding of God's plan for us. So, you know, then another thing comes up. People want to know um, how can we get saved or... Um, understand who could save you from your spiritual death um, because we were all born sinful. We were all born of sin. And it tells us in John 3.16 so if we could just turn to John 3.16 because I want to read 16 and 17. And then my people tell you, do as I say, not as what I, you know, what I do. But if you're living that godly lifestyle, you need to talk it and walk it. And, you know, like I said, it's, it's not an easy path. But, you know, if you have the Lord and, and you, in the faith and, and the Lord, you can walk the walk and talk the talk, no matter who's around you with that negativity because, it's going to come in our everyday Christian life because somebody going to want to knock you off that path to righteousness, knowing that, you know, you got to seek the Lord every day and get closer with him. You know, I always say, you know, you act and you do what's around you if you stay around it long enough. So, you know, to walk the walk, you still got to talk the talk, but believe in the Bible and the Lord for what he has done for you on a daily basis. So, as we know, in 316, it tells us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm going to read that again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have an everlasting life. And then verse 17 goes on to say, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So that's where we want to be, saved, 
salvation. We want eternal life. So, you know, like I said, my wife just said, the Lord, son, his only begotten son, and his only begotten son was to deliver the message that the Lord has started. And he didn't finish, so at the same time, that's where the Lord sent his son for him to finish, to, to deliver to us as the people, and then for the people to keep delivering the word of the Lord that he has put into us as a believer and us as the Bible, because we have non-believers that do not believe, so we got to preach daily to the non-believers so they can understand, well, arch-believers, you know, who is our faith and who is our Father who blesses us on a daily basis. So we see where God sent his son, Jesus. He sent him as a representative for our ransom. He paid for, he provided the payment for our sins by providing his own son to take our place as a substitute for all the sins to be forgiven. So he's already paid for it. Our sins have been forgiven. We just got to live that upright life of Christ. And I, I'm just so thankful. I'm thankful for him for giving his only son so that we could be saved. I can be saved. So our jobs as Christians, we have to go out and teach the word of God to people. And to we, save, I'm sorry, but I'm sorry, and to save the unbelievers, because like my wife said, not only the city of Jacksonville is hurting and crying for daily, you know, sinful ways of what's going on in the world. There's a whole lot of, you know, cities and countries that's, you know, dying because they're unbelievable. But, you know, in other places, you know, they kill you for trying to, you know, serve somebody higher than them. I mean, who's higher than the Lord? There's nobody. But if you, you know, begin to open the Bible, guess what? They kill you. And you have people sneaking out and trying to find the, the way, the truth, and the life. And this is in the Bible. So once they learn, they know that in some countries, you know, it's, it's death if they find out that they're trying to seek the higher God. And once you seek the higher God, uh, you're trying to, you know, seek the individuals who don't believe. And, it, and, it, and it's sad that, you know, us Christians, you know, we have to be crucified for, you know, things that we believe in, which is the Lord. But, you know, it happened on a daily basis, but, you know, like, you just don't stop. You keep preaching, you keep teaching, and you keep, you know, reading your Bible, and you keep telling a non-believer, it's, it's a higher God than me, it's a higher God than man, and it's the Lord. Because, like I said, sin happens daily, even for us Christians. But, like I said, we have to repent and, you know, don't don't turn back to it because things happen in our lives where, Somebody might say something to us. We may not verbally say it out, but we thanking it. But it's still so sin. So we have to repent. <laughs> and it's still sin. Because people hear me all the time at the, at the job. When I'm feeling like I'm about to say something, I just be like, Jesus, take the wheel. And the young lady behind me, she would be like, you all right up there? I'm, yep, just about to thank something that I shouldn't have been thanking. So I just called out Jesus' name, and that just put me right back. It levels me out to where I need to be. So it goes back to trust and faith um, that God is who he says he is. You know, having that salvation, He again, he provided that payment for our sins so that we could be free. We could have redemption. Hebrews 9 and 22. If we could turn there, please. And it reads, and almost all things are by the law, purged with blood and without shedding of the blood is no remission, no forgiveness. So we, the blood has to be shed. He, he shed blood for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. He died 
to pay for our sins of man. However, he did rose again, conquering death and making it possible for us to be saved. And I always, you know, I tell people, you know, even, you know, myself, when you're thinking stuff, what would Jesus do? Is this something Jesus, Jesus would do? I always, you know, look at that now when I'm doing something. I always make sure he's, I seek him for understanding and I seek him for knowledge before I make a decision. When me and my husband make decisions, you know, for the home, we seek him because he's going to be the reason or he is the reason we make these decisions. So the next thing is admitting that you've sinned. Admitting that you have sinned. It's a prerequisite to accepting Christ. So we have to be able to admit that we've done wrong. You know, and that's just anything you're doing when, like, people going out here murdering, stealing, whatever they're doing that's wrong, you have to admit to it. You know you've done it. Admit it. It's going to free you. It's going to free your soul. And you have to repent, you know, have to repent and, and ask the Lord for forgiveness. But at the same time, you cannot repeat the same thing over and over and over and over again and keep repenting and you're hoping the Lord to forgive you for your repeated sins because it's not going to happen because you keep putting yourself in it. Like I said, the Lord can deliver you the first time. Uh, maybe the second time depends on the situation. But the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, it's the same thing, sin. And you can't keep asking for repenting on the same sin that you keep repeating and repeating because, like we said, the wages of sin is death. And then, you know, you put that amongst yourself, not the Lord. So, again, admitting, admitting your wrongdoing, asking God for forgiveness because we know even when people do wrong to us, we have to be able to forgive. The forgiveness is for us, not them. So, you know, you, you can forgive. You may not forget, but you've forgiven them of whatever they may have done to you. And this goes on, you know, with family as well. A family member might have said something to somebody, so now you got a grudge going between two family members. They don't want to speak. But we've got to come together. We've got to forgive one another because... Like I said, the way the world is going right now, we need salvation. We need families coming together more than ever at this point. And you're blocking your sin for not, for, I mean, you're blocking your blessing for not forgiving, you know, those who have sinned against you. I mean, two wrongs don't make a right. I mean, you have to, you know, pray for them and pray for yourself because, you know, we sometimes fall short of sin, but at the same time, people will pull you to that negativity. Before they pull you to that, that negativity, you have to thank and bless and put yourself in the Lord position. What would he do? And, and, and he gives you the chance to pray and, and, and say, you know, let him handle it. Because when you handle it, guess what? You put yourself in the position of what they did, which is sin. So, you, you know, you should just, you know, Pray for that person and definitely pray for yourself and give you the strength to not to stoop to that level because it's not going to be easy. But once you let the Lord take the wheel, guess what? He drives straight forward all the time. So now that you've admitted your sin, you've asked Christ for forgiveness, and you've repented, you got to start turning your ways to God's ways. It can't be the way you used to do something. It has to be God's way. If you know you've been going to functions where they do stuff that is not godly anymore. If you're not strong enough for that, don't even go until you are able to build your self-esteem, your Christian life, where you may be able to go, you, you show your face, and then you leave. So you have to be able to turn to God's ways. And then we want to profess Jesus as our Savior. So
So after you've done all of that, you have to profess that he is your Savior. And in Romans 10 and 23, it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So understanding that Jesus said to receive or accept him, we must receive whom God sent, the Holy Spirit. And you have to, you have to ask for it because it's something. He's not going to give you something you don't want. You have to ask for the Holy Spirit to come into your life. And once you do all of that, you can taste and see that all the gifts of God are good. I'm so thankful and I'm so glad that God is a part of my life. He has gotten me through so much. And I'm so thankful for all of that. I'm thankful of how he gave his son to die on the cross for us and take away all my sins. So I just continue to live my life, you know, God's way daily. And like my wife said, the taste of the Lord is good. And, and, I, and I take that as, you know, out of my, you know, 40 plus years and my 20 plus years of marriage, the more I get to seek him, the more tasty that he is to me and goodness of our life. Because he had blessed us even more than what we had when we was non-believers. But the more as we become believers of him, blessing upon blessing upon blessing. And so, you know, we have family members and friends always say, oh, man, y'all work hard, y'all do all this and do that. But the good Lord bless us to wake up every morning to go out and get it. And, 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 and if you, you know, believe in him, you do the same thing I do or the same thing my wife do or the same thing other believers do. You seek the Lord and you praise him on a daily basis and he will bless you. And, and the goodness of the Lord is unimmeasurable. Because one thing for certain is I know where he don't brought me from and I know where he's taking me from or taking me and my family from. You know, we don't been through some trials and tribulations, but we stick it out through the Lord and he continues to bless us on a daily basis. And another thing that worries people about giving their life to God, they think they can't have fun. We as Christians, we can have just as much as fun as you do, as the non-believers do. It's just the way that we carry ourselves. It's the way that we do it. So then they just have to believe that God loves them. And, and he's already proven that by giving us his son to die for us in place and you know to die for our sins and repentance just keep you know turning turning to God turning to God when you feel like you're going back down that path turn to God turn to God seek him talk to him you can talk to God just like we talk to each other as humans uh, so that'll be another step that they have to do and, and they'll probably like, you talk to God. Yeah, I talk to him just like I'm sitting here talking to you. No matter where I'm at, I could be in my home, in my car, at work. But talk to God. He hears every word you're saying. And sometimes people think, well, I've prayed and I've talked to him, but he hasn't given me what I asked for. He's going to give you what you need when you need it because he's an on-time God. And that's when he, excuse me, baby, and that's for when he wants to deliver from you. But at the same time, you have to deliver yourself from some things that you may be doing wrong in order for the God to speak to you when he feels he's ready to speak to you. But you still have to talk to him. You know, you got to let him know your everyday life struggles. You have to know the good things and let him know the bad things, you know, because I always say, you know, he is he the way, the truth, all. and the life. He sees all, he hears all, and he watches you do it all. So you got to talk to him, you know, when you're up, talk to him when you're down. You know, it continues to, you know, some people are going to think you're crazy when you're talking to yourself, but guess what? Let them thank you because you know who, who's got your back, and that's the Lord. So talk to him, you know, on a daily basis. And then the last thing, you have to be baptized. Baptism is used to signify 
the death and burial of your old life. That old life is dead and gone. We have to die to self every day when dealing with sin. Salvation, you know, baptism is commanded for forgiveness of your sins. You Got to wash it away, get rid of it. And it don't matter what anybody says, because like I said, I used to be worried about what people would say and do, but I had to get to a point in my life where I was like, being a Christian ain't bad. It's a wonderful thing. It's a lovely thing. Because he has, like my husband said, he's gotten us through so much. And I know the, and I'll say the first time when I tried to turn my life over to God, I was young. And, you know, when you're young, you try to follow your friends and do stuff everybody else is doing. So we all did it, but didn't really have an understanding of it. So I remember the day I said the second time we actually started going to Grace and Truth over church when we was over at the Ramada building. And at that time, I think we was going through some things then. And that Saturday, we was at a family funeral, and we'd seen Pastor Marvin. And he was like, you know, y'all going to church? Mm, no, I ain't going. But I do know I need that's something I need to do. So that Sunday, I woke up that morning and I told the kids, you know, get up. We're going to go to church. We went, had a wonderful time. We felt like home. It felt like home going in that day. And the kids, you know, Pastor Tara was talking to us about Bible study that Wednesday. And the kids was like, oh, we want to come. We want to come. So to see them excited made me excited. So we went that Wednesday and we was getting ready to leave. Greg at that time used to work late shifts, so we was like, okay, we ready. He was coming in. We was getting ready to go out, but he was like, hold on. I'm going to take a quick shower. I'm going to go with y'all. And we was actually sitting at the table in the, doing um, Bible study that day, and I would already said in my mind, I'm giving God my life again. When I got up to go up at the end of that service, he was already up there. <laughs> So we gave God back our lives that day, and it was, it was amazing. You know, it, we've had trials and tribulations, but through it all, God has kept us. It has been wonderful and amazing through the 22-plus years, because we just celebrated 22 years on the 8th. So God is good. Yes, he so, is. So, again, we have to seek salvation. Salvation is what all non-believers need. And again, us as Christians, we have to be able to go out there and give it to the non-believers. Live a godly life. And our actions are going to show them. So we can't, you know, if we say one thing, we can't go and be doing another thing. Because they're going to look at it. And that's another reason why a lot of the non-believers don't even want to step foot in the church anymore because it's like, why go in there when I seen so-and-so doing this or I seen pastor or minister doing that, so why should I go and step foot in the church when they doing it? Even though you should be going to seek God for yourself, not what those individuals are doing because if you read the word, you'll understand and know what the truth is. Amen. The Lord is good. 
Amen. We love them to life. Amen. And they've been with us ever since. Amen. And uh, we give God glory. Amen. For continuing to give us a mind to reach the lost, to be witnesses, to let our light shine. Amen. To just be a blessing, a blessing in people's lives. Amen. Sometimes you just pray with people, encourage them, and you, you really never know where they are. Amen. And uh, so it's a blessing of God. He called us. Amen. To himself, he's called us to be lights in the world. Amen. And people are out there hurting. They're, they're bleeding. They're going through. They're having challenges in their lives. And uh, we want to bring them into a place to where they can, again, if need be, uh, honor God in their life. Amen. Serve the Lord, enter in, and understand, amen, that there is a place for them. Amen. You have to seek it out. Sometimes just simple obedience. Amen. To God. Amen. And you'll know what you'll know where the Lord wants you to be. Amen. Where he desires for you to be. And so I'm saying to people, no matter how how much you've been hurt, uh, what you have seen is still God's will that you connect to a church, uh, a ministry. We know, first of all, that you give your life over to God or you backslid and you come back home. Amen. To love, to care, to kindness, to mercy, to forgiveness, uh, to restoration and reconciliation. Uh, amen in your life so i thank god for them today and that god has given us all the word and the ministry of reconciliation amen and we and, and like greg said we all call to be preachers we all call to be witnesses amen you might not be behind a sacred desk in the church but walmart amen is your pulpit your platform amen the shell gas station your job your community amen your name wherever you are Amen. As a child of God, 24-7. Amen. Even if you get wake, w woken up, amen, and out of a good sleep. Amen. And uh, somebody needs your help. Needs, amen, prayer. Needs, uh, you know, somebody just to have a listening ear. Uh, you know, just need somebody to be there. You know, uh, to be a help, aid, or support. Uh, that's what we're here for. Amen. We should be like a hospital, like, amen, an emergency room, like a, a trauma center. That no matter who they are, where they are, what they've done, what they're in, that they will no longer run away from God. Amen. But that they will run to the Lord. Amen. With their safety, with their security. Amen. Where we have eternal life. And so thank God for his love, his kindness, his tender mercy. Even after we have been saved. Amen. We need the mercy of God, the forgiveness of God, the compassion of God. Amen. And he cares for us. He cares for you. He cares for them. Amen. So good, big God bless you to those of you that have watched, have been watching by way of uh, Facebook uh, live stream. Uh, I waved at most of y'all. Um, uh, we thank God for you uh, joining us. Uh, if you don't have a church home, amen, come join us live. Amen. We are doing the will of God. Amen. Um, we are rooted. We are grounded. We are teaching. We're ministering. We're loving. We're equipping uh, the people of God, the saints of God for the work of the ministry as well as life's responsibility. So, to the uttermost, Jesus saves, and he wants you to live. And we love you to life. Uh, big God bless you. This is our Food and Fellowship Sunday, every fourth Sunday, along with our Youth Sunday. Uh, so you're always welcome anytime to join us. We have intercessory prayer on Tuesdays from 7 to 8, one hour. And we have our midweek Bible study on Wednesdays from 7 to 8.30 p.m. And then we're here again Sunday um, our main service is at 10.30 uh, If you're on uh, Facebook uh, Go and check out the uh, early morning teaching That we did also uh, On the gifts of the spirit It'll be a real blessing in your life uh, Revisit this message again also uh, You don't hear everything the first time Believe it'll be a blessing in your life again uh, Subscribe, amen To us, and when we come up, amen um, Come on I mean, It'll alert you, and if you want to tune in Tune in, if you want to stay tuned in st Stay tuned in but it'll at least alert you that we are live and that we are on the air of Facebook Live. So we want to use every tool, every outlet that God's given us uh, to spread the word of God, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, to seek and to save uh, they that are lost. Amen. So God bless you. We thank you for joining us. And we pray God's blessing upon your life and upon your family and everything that you touch. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. All right, well, food and fellowship, uh, amen, um, <clears throat> uh, amen, thank God for you, and um, those of you that will be sowing into 
the work of God, tithes and offerings. Uh, we thank God for you, for your giving heart, your loving heart, your giving spirit, your loving spirit that you uh, have shown and continue to show towards uh, the ministry. I had something that was pressing my spirit. I was back there in the back and um, kind of looked out the door out there. And um, we don't always fully know what God is doing or where he's taking us. Um, and this is this even this is not even predicated on our current situation with the fire marshal, chief, and all that stuff. Um, but I, I believe I heard God said that um, you're not here to stay. You're getting ready to move. Now where we moving? I don't know where we moving. I ain't got hear God say where we moving. Amen. All I'm saying is pray and believe God with us. Amen. Because the blessing of the Lord make it rich and it what and it adds no no sorrow and uh so we are praying uh enlarge god enlarge our territory increase our borders and uh, god always prepare you for where you going for where you going for where you going so there's always a season of preparation uh in god and uh so that where you are going it won't necessarily overwhelm you it won't necessarily overwhelm you uh but god will prepare you for the journey he'll prepare you for the people uh, that you ought to lead and that you ought to minister to. And uh, <clears throat> we want to do everything that we can do while we have time. Amen. While we are here. Amen. Doing the will of God. To leave a legacy and a heritage. Amen. In the earth realm. So wherever that is, Lord, we believe we receive. And uh, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And uh, you know how to divine and connect us, Father, with what your purpose and your plan is. And you have always given us provision for the vision. And that we ask that you will continue to help us to be good stewards of everything. That us into another level, another dimension, another realm. In you, Father. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. We give you glory, Father God. We thank you for vision and for visionaries. We thank you for, for ministry gifts. Thank you for willing workers and servant leaders that we all humble ourselves today even the more under your mighty hand that you would exalt us in due time, Father, that we use the gifts, the talents, the skills, the abilities that you have given us and that we will work while it is day but we know that the night cometh when no man will be able to work Lord. Help us to maximize our potential in you Father that no one will sit and die when we can all live that we will glorify you that we will bring honor to your name that, yea, Lord, that somebody would even lay aside every weight and the sin that we're so easily beset them, Lord, that we would align ourselves up with your will, with your purpose, and with your plan for our lives, and that we can truly say that all things are working together for the good of them that love God and that are called according to his purpose. Father, I thank you now. That you would heal every broken heart. I thank you now that everything that's disjointed and that's disconnected would be reconciled and brought back to you. I praise you, Lord, that you would deal with the heart and the minds of your people. That we would see the error of our ways. That we will humble ourselves, seek your face. That your people that are called by your name would humble themselves and pray. Seek your face, turn from our wicked ways, and we would heal from heaven. You would forgive us our sin, and you would heal our hand, land. And Father, I pray for somebody that says, even in the struggle of, of, of life in their mind, the frustrations of life, the irritations of life, Lord, and we hear that Satan is trying to frustrate the plan of God for their lives. I pray for a breakthrough. 
I pray for a deliverance. I pray for healing hands to touch them at the very point of their need. That their eyes would be open, their understanding would be enlightened. That truth would be revealed to them. Open their blinded eyes and unstop their deaf ears. Thank you for freedom and liberty. That where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Thank you for freedom in our lives, freedom in our homes, freedom in our communities and our neighborhoods. That we would know without a shadow of a doubt that thou art God. Besides you, there is no other. Thank you for the preach word, the talk word today. Strengthen the messengers, Lord. I give you praise. Cover them. That we would all be covered in the blood of Jesus against any retaliation or revenge of the enemy. That we would all ourselves, likewise, that of Christ have suffered in the flesh. That we know that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Thank you for your hedge of protection, God. Encamped all around about us. Heal every sick body. We curse every sickness. We curse every disease. We thank you for authority and dominion that we walk into the glory of God in Jesus' name. Everybody agree with that said? Amen.